Well, from downed drones to hacked computers, the U.S. has suffered some major technological blows recently. This is the U.S. splurges on military spending and often touts being the best when it comes to advanced technology. But apparently we're not advanced enough for other countries to take down our drones. Iran claims to have hijacked one of our most advanced spying tools as it was flying over the country. The drone, which Iran says they intercepted, was made by Lockheed Martin, one of the world's largest defense contractors. The company advertises being the best when it comes to combating cyber threats. Take a look at their ad. Detected an anomaly. How bad is it? Traffic's off the chart. They're picking more targets. Isolate. Prevent damage. Got him. Great exercise, guys. Let's run it again. So they claim to protect national security by preventing cyber threats, but somehow one of Lockheed's drones ended up here in the hands of Iran. The country claims to have hijacked the drones by being technologically savvy, hacking into its GPS system and telling it to land exactly where they wanted it to. And apparently they did such a good job that the aircraft appears to be in pristine condition. So how can the most militarily advanced country be vulnerable to such a cyber failure? To dig deeper into this, I am joined by even Eland, Ivan Elon, that is, um, fellow at the Independent Institutes. Um, so how is it that the U.S. can invest so much money in these drones, um, yet they're so easily taken down? Well, the U.S. always has a, it has a gold-plated military, and it uh, gets in, enamored with uh, technical fixes and gee whiz things, whereas countries like Iran or China that don't have as much money, what they tend to do is try to focus on what the military calls asymmetrical threats. In other words, they don't they want to get uh, our expensive systems and they want to find some easy way to get into them or hack into them uh, using cyber methods or uh, you know, find some other way to neutralize them that's cheap because they don't have a lot of money. And sometimes that can be devastating. Like in Iraq, we had the roadside bomb, the low-tech guerrillas. Uh, uh, created a lot of havoc with that. That's another uh, example of asymmetric uh, threats that the U.S. military faces. And this drone was certainly an asymmetric threat uh, being hacked like that. And um, apparently the company Lockheed Martin, they knew from the beginning that um, these drones were had the capability uh, of being hacked, that they had this glitch, yet they still allowed them to fly. Um, given their ability to be hacked, as we have seen in Iran, is it possible that these drones can, can, be, can pose a danger to the U.S.? Well, the problem with these drones is uh, they're, they're very good at... Uh, preserving pilots lives and everything and they were also supposed to be well if they got shot down you know you wouldn't have a captive pilot or a dead pilot or whatever which is good but we can still see there's a big ruckus especially when a high-tech stealth drone goes down so there's still a political problem when these uh, spy planes go down whether they're manned or not and they'll always, that'll always be a problem uh, for the United States, uh, and you, you can't have no risk, and they do need to uh, get intelligence on various countries, so they'll probably still keep using them, even if one gets shot down. What they'll probably do, and I think they have Lockheed Martin, is now fixing the problem that, he's being paid to fix the problem that they knew was there to begin with. So although this happens a lot in American defense contracting, that uh, it's uh, rather slipshod because there's not a whole lot of competition among the companies. There are mostly monopolies uh, and that sort of thing. So you don't have the market. It's not a traditionally market-based business like you would see uh, two uh, cell phone com uh, companies competing with each other. The, the Defense Department likes certain contractors, and Lockheed Martin is one of the biggest ones. And it, uh, so it gets a little sloppy sometimes because it, there's no competition or not much competition on these contracts. And you bring up another good point is that um, this company is going to have to fix these drones now that this glitch has been identified. I mean, is it possible that um, these glitches are there to keep on encouraging more military spending to, to upgrade this equipment and, and to, or, or replace them? Well, I don't think the company probably purposely put these glitches in there because this hurts their reputation and that sort of thing. But still, they do make additional money 
uh, and fixing them or adding to them. A lot of times they'll identify other things they could add, bells and whistles they could add. So uh, these, these weapon systems are often years behind and uh, more expensive. And there are a lot of technical glitches simply because uh, you're you're uh, at the edge of technology and number two there's no competition as I mentioned so you do have a lot of problems in defense contrasting both cost, uh, time way behind schedule and these glitches that do come up. Um, and another point I uh, wanted to bring up, this is Iran that supposedly hijacked this drone. And Iran is not considered to be technologically savvy. So, um, you know, if Iran can down one of our drones, presumably other countries with more sophisticated cyber hacking abilities can do the same thing. Oh, certainly, certainly. And I think uh, that's a real worry here. And I think that's, what, that's why this is getting so much attention, because Iran isn't known for its uh, you know, dazzling technical performance, especially in nuclear weapons and that sort of thing. They've been kind of ham-handed in uh, approaching that. But I think you have to give the Iranians cre more credit than a lot of people do for, for what they have done. And uh, you know, they haven't had much help. And in fact, the world is yeah, you know, against them. I'm not saying it's good that they're getting a nuclear weapon or even having these capabilities to down U.S. drones. But I think they, they do better than, than most people think they do. Exactly. I mean, and if this is true, that they were able to intercept one of our drones, I mean, it shows that they are technologically savvy, m maybe more so than, than people would think. Uh, right. Well, you can see these stealth aircraft. They downed one in uh, the Kosovo War, an F-117. It was a manned uh, plane, and everyone was surprised that they could do it. There's always some vulnerability that even these stealth systems have and we've seen that it's the, G, the global positioning system in this one I think uh, so there may be other glitches in it too but uh, there are vulnerabilities even with very sophisticated weapons and if uh, the other side knows how to bring them down uh, as in this case they discovered how to do it uh, of course you can have a real big problem on your hands. Okay, I uh, wanted to bring something else up, perhaps another example of technology um, gone wrong or, or, or not advanced enough. Um, this whole case of Bradley Manning, he is accused uh, of hacking into a computer and um, exposing hundreds of thousands of documents and cables. And supposedly he did this by downloading these files or, or transferring these files onto Lady Gaga CDs. Um, and I mean, how is it possible that with our advanced technology that something like this, uh, a, a hack, you know, a hacker um, can, can go into these computers and um, get these documents uh, such, of such important magnitude. Shouldn't there be protections in place to prevent something like that from happening in the first place? Well, they do have protections. I think in many cases the government's uh, excessive security in, in some cases uh, impedes the technological solutions that the private computer companies could bring in to do some of this, th these things. So uh, actually their security requirements are kind of faux security requirements and if they would let the in in competition I think among more competition among private companies and reducing some of these restrictions and everything would probably get them better systems than they're having. So I think there's an opportunity for increased competition, especially in computers. Uh, you can make an argument in military aircraft that you can't get that many people that want to make it because uh, it's kind of an arcane thing, but computers and that sort of thing uh, and safeguards uh, computer security. Certainly many companies do that in the private sector and I think the, co the, the government needs to uh, deregulate that and make it uh, increase the competition. I think they would have a lot better uh, safeguards in the end if they had actually fewer security requirements. And lastly, just want to ask you, um, after looking at these examples, I mean, do you think that this exemplifies the fact that there are holes in U.S. security and um, despite spending all this money uh, on this technology that, that there, we all, we are, that this kind of reveals some of our vulnerabilities? Well, I think every country has vulnerabilities. The Iranians had vulnerabilities. They had that uh, computer uh, virus that the U.S. and Israel presumably put in there. So all countries have vulnerabilities, but I think the problem with the U.S. is we pay exorbitant uh, prices for this equipment. It's supposed to be the best in the world, and you see these uh, basic glitches, uh, and we, we, we just, you know, you can't have a perfect system, but on the other hand, we're paying so much for this stuff, and they have such a poor performance in defense contracting on, uh, you know, uh, being uh, delayed, Oh, costs overrunning, and then these problems that come up that we just, 
the V-22 aircraft, which is a aircraft that goes up and down, that had countless failures before they spent a lot of money. That's another example of, of where uh, they really, you know, that's why people get so disturbed about this, because the U.S. is as a Cadillac military, if you will, or a Porsche military even, and uh, compared to other militaries, and the taxpayer expects to get, for spending all this money, expects to get systems that work, that are on time, and that don't cost a lot, but it doesn't do that. Certainly raises a lot of questions. Ivan, thank you so much for weighing in on this. That was Senior Fellow at the Independent Institute, Ivan Elin.